Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining my super fun, happy, positive uh, YouTube channel where everything always goes really, really well. This is, uh, this is how you know you're from the Midwest. Right here. Beautiful. <laughs> going on guys back in the garage with the w114 215 if you remember last time we got it running which is awesome so technically once we hook up the gas tank this thing should drive around but right now it does not stop now, i don't know why it doesn't stop there's a bunch of calipers in the trunk so i'm going to guess that has something to do with it i've got one of the uh brand new look at this thing it's going to be the nicest thing on the whole car shiniest thing on the whole car absolutely without question we've got some new calipers front and rear uh, I don't really know what I'm getting myself into. There's some lines back there. Um, I think we just have to pull the wheel off, take a look, and see what's going on. So I don't necessarily know if this is going to be uh, super duper interesting or not. I'm imagining a bunch of things breaking and going wrong, which is one of the reasons why I'm documenting this brake job, because normally you wouldn't think of a brake job as going to be that interesting. But I think there's probably still going to be some stuff to discover, like, uh, like, this, uh, this <laughs> like this little bit of rust here on the rocker panel. You know, discover things just like that. But nobody's going to see that. Nobody's getting that low. If you're this low looking and you find this rust someday, fuck you. Get away from my car. You're way too close. Anyway, let's get this wheel pulled off and uh, take a look at the uh, brake caliper situation and see what's going on. <laughs> Just a standard kind of rusty old caliper. So I have it, I have the caliper, so I'm gonna replace it. You know, the brakes don't work at all. To the floor, no brakes, nothing. So I'm gonna replace them, but you know, honestly, they don't, this rubber line, I take it back. This rubber line looks pretty rough. It is uh, super crusty, it's got some cracks in it. We don't wanna deal with any of that, so let's get, at least this side replaced. We'll hang out and do that. And maybe I uh, should probably investigate on how to lower this thing a little bit too while we're in here. So this is kind of one of my favorite caliper designs. Um, when they just have the pins, you don't have to remove the caliper, swing the caliper up out of the way, you know, put the uh, pads in, put everything back together. You just drive these pins out and then pull the brake pads right out of the caliper. Now, I just need to take the whole caliper off. Let me show you what I mean. We can just drive these pins out and pull the pads right out. Super easy. slide them back in, put the pins in, and you'd be good to go. But we gotta go a lot farther than that. We've got to uh, pull the whole caliper off, which I don't know if there's any brake fluid in the system, but we're about to find out. Yeah, it's empty. There's nothing in there at all. Who knows, maybe the brakes just needed to be bled, but we've got all these new parts. If this thing's gonna go on the rally, it'll be nice to have the brakes totally dialed in. Wow. Might need to put a little heat on there for a minute. So one thing, this is a propane torch, not a map torch, so it doesn't get anywhere near as hot. So I'm gonna have to hold this here for a little bit to see if we can get a little bit of heat in there so we can get this thing to come off. As I'm looking at it, I'm looking at all the bushings on this thing. Everything is trashed. Everything needs to be replaced. Question is, how far do you take it? All right, maybe we just need more leverage. 
Holy cow. Nope, that ain't it either. Holy goodness. More leverage. All right. This is quite a bit more leverage. Oh. Yeah, there's nothing like mechanical advantage. There it is. What's funny is I'm looking at this caliper and I think it's been rebuilt. I really do. The boots look great. The little cover in there where it attaches to the brake pads or pushes on the brake pads, still zinc plated. If they hadn't been rebuilt, it certainly wouldn't be. Oh, wow. It's really all I needed. Now let's get these things on the bench. I'll show you what I meant about the boots and the little cover. Another thing I think that's interesting about this car and kind of just uh, some of the more expensive cars of the day, anyway, like my 911, for example, has disc brakes all around, no drum brakes. In 1972, that was a pretty big deal. And it kind of gives you the, the sense of breadth that you had in cars back then. Now, everything's got disc brakes, everything's got ABS, everything has everything. You basically are more comfortable, it's quieter, it's faster, maybe a little bit safer, and you've got the badge recognition. But back in the day, there was real differences in things. And stuff like having four wheel disc brakes, that was a big deal. All right, so we got caliper one right here. If you look in there, you can see the nice boot. And obviously you guys don't have touch of vision, so you can't feel it, but it actually feels really nice and supple too. So this is still a good caliper. And, uh, but this, this is a lot nicer. So this is the one that we're gonna put on. Um, I'm gonna get this thing bolted up. I'm gonna get the brake lines on and I'm gonna do all four. And unless there is a huge disaster, the next thing you and me are gonna do together is we're gonna hook up that rear fuel line so we can dump some gas in there, get this thing running and back it out of the garage, which is gonna be another huge milestone. Running, stopping, moving. Those are some huge milestones. We got running done. See if we can get moving going. As I'm sitting here doing this, I'm thinking about this, which means I know you're thinking about this because everybody on the internet likes to look and say, hey, that's what that guy did wrong. It's I'm not changing the rotors out. And the reason is because they still have a lot of life left and there's just a little bit of surface rust on them, which is gonna be gone pretty damn quick once you start driving this thing. So get off my case. Remember how I said I wasn't really gonna come back till I screwed something up, which is usually inevitable? Let's, uh, let's take a look at this here and see if you can figure out my mistake by looking at this. I'll give you about five seconds, post up in the comments, tell me what the mistake is. That's right, this caliper is on upside down. And the way that you know is you've got this bleeder right here and this bleeder needs to be on the top. And you can see there's a little boss for it right here on the casting you know, because they use the same caliper for both sides, except this side has got the bleeder. The air is gonna rise up, and in this case, you would never, ever, ever get this caliper to bleed. It would work, kind of, but it would never, ever bleed properly. So, we gotta get the other one out of the trunk, put it on, and hopefully, next time we hang out, we'll be doing the fuel line stop. I am not so sure. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining my super fun, happy, positive uh, YouTube channel where everything always goes really, really well, like, uh, like this. This is, uh, this is how you know you're from the Midwest, right here. Beautiful. Check out the high quality of this bolt that's sheared off in there. I really like, this is actually a 10 out of 10 example where it you know, sheared off flush right inside the knuckle of a uh, part that's probably really hard to replace. So yeah, happy fun times. We're gonna have to grab a nut and uh, hopefully weld it onto that. <laughs> See if we can back it out. Not, not good. But also, not the end of the world.
fantastic. Yeah, it didn't even bother to stick, just pooled up in there. Fuck me. That is a lot of steel right there, so it just soaks the heat right out of it. And I don't think my welder's hot enough to just zap the bolt right there and uh, get the weld started. I give up. I couldn't let it go. So the next day, I went to buy a bolt extractor at the store. They didn't have any. So I'm gonna give welding one more try. I'm gonna hope it's gonna work. I've got the torch just sitting on this thing, just sitting there, just heating the ever-living hell out of it, trying to get hot enough that when I strike that weld, I can get some of the uh, some of that broken bolt to stick to the weld. Fingers crossed is the last try, otherwise we gotta wait for a bolt extractor because this ain't working, and the steel is way, way too hard uh, to drill out with any of the drill bits I have. They're just all my drill bits are toast. So fingers crossed that this works. There is a 0% chance that this is gonna work, zero. Literally, literally zero. Come on, please, please, please. Please, 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 please. Oh! oh! Maybe not. All right, broken bolt, day three. Went and got some, uh, went and got some map gas. Hopefully we can get this to glow for us, get a little bit warm so I can get this weld to stick. This is, this is crazy, you guys. It's literally just ripping chunks off the thing. It's just not, there's no way. It's just not sticking. It just isn't. Can't get it hot enough. Yeah, that's about all I can try. With this, with this method anyway. Well, now that I've spent so much money on that, it didn't work. We can uh, do something else that won't work. Now that I've tempered that bolt, I've got some bolts extractor tools here. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Got some, uh, we bought some new cobalt bits, brand new, even bought some extras. This is it, I mean, if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna have to come out and go to a machine shop or something like that, or, I don't know. <laughs> I just wish it wouldn't have broken off flush, maybe if I just had something I could grab onto, but the welding's not working, let's try and drill it out. So by now you guys are probably sick of being down here with me, sick of this view, but, 
I'm feeling it more than you are, I promise. I've got a small drill bit, a little bit of a bigger drill bit, and then we're gonna have to go to another one that's a little bit bigger than this. Uh, this is really, this bolt is really hard steel and it's been essentially tempered by me over and over again. So we're gonna start small and work our way up. way better than expected. I didn't realize how shitty the drill bits that I had here were. Some brand new cobalt drill bits did the trick. It took three and three different sizes to get in there. You start with one that's too big, you're never gonna get it. You gotta start small. And uh, yeah, I think we're ready to try the, the easy out or the extractor or whatever it is. Um, but it looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a wall, thin wall left of the bolt that's in there. I think we might be able to get that thing to bite and pull this out. Major, fingers crossed, major. <laughs> That's gonna be the one right there. So the way these work is you have these teeth on here and they bite. And as you twist this out, it actually drives in and turns it the opposite way. So it's basically reverse threads. Pretty, pretty straightforward, I guess. scares me. Come on. It's hitting. Come on, man. Can I catch a break? Hitting the back of the rotor, so I've got to take the rotor off to get this thing to work. You know? Come on. Since it's fucked and I'm gonna have to get a new hub anyway, I decided to go at it with an air hammer. Nope. That's it, you know, that's I just wanted to see if I could get it out even though I was knew I was gonna mangle the hub. I don't know what's going on with the steel in there, but it is it's just one piece of steel. There's no way to get it out. It is that galled, that fucked. I don't know if someone over-tightened the hell out of it or what, but it is. It's toast. 